How does the song go again? Push the button. I Are don't know that that's a song, but if it is, I like it. We I are live. It, I, think, I think it is a song. We're live. We're live. Um. I, I, okay. Is the, is it working? Can everyone hear this? Let me. Let me look at the chat. See. Um. Okay. So I'm on a... Okay. I... Sorry. Man. Okay. I I see. Sorry, I can't watch. I have to get some sleep. Bye bye. Wait. <laughs> Great, great way to start this. I love that someone came in like before it even started. Just go, I will not be watching this. <laughs> oh yeah, people doing the boobs thing unprompted. I have done a meme. Excellent. I haven't. Wait, I can't see that. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I guess you've yeah, got the, the chat, chat before me. Yeah, the chat's the chat's coming up. Can people as well as as well as okay as well as doing the boobs thing? Can people just write give Stu money? Just, I, w I want you to all start doing that unprompt, unprompted. Then that will become the meme, and hope, ho hopefully, my plans will continue from there. That's a really weird artifact of the internet, though, because I just you were saying, "Oh, good, boobs are in the chat," and I was looking at the chat, and I could see all the messages, and <laughs> none were there. And then, like, thank a you, defrosted robot. You said it, give Stu money. Yeah, a good second yeah, after you said it. it. Yeah, keep keep doing that. Send Stu to China. No, fuck off. <laughs> no, you can't. There's coronavirus there. Yeah, yeah, not not doing that. A anyway, hello, we're live. Hello, and, and, and it's and it's working now. Wait, welcome but to Jay and Stu Talk Doctor Who. I like the name because it rhymes. Oh yeah, that's true. You're a poet, and you. I'm assuming it was intentional. It was intentional. Uh, and, anyway, we're here to talk about Doctor Who, the frankly Victorian episode of two weeks ago. Uh, no, it was it was this week. Remember oh, how in, oh, yeah, in last was, episode it, it we was, said it uh, was this week. It was this week, and we're here right now. Remember in last episode we said <laughs> see you next week, and I assumed that I was going to be able to stream from my laptop while I was in the Highlands. Uh, I was wrong. Sorry, my favourite one in the chat just came up. Give Stu boobs <laughs> <laughs> instead of bees. <laughs> boobs for Stu. Yeah, I've done a meme. Yeah, I did a meme. Oh, I feel a sense of achievement. You have no idea how much of the chat I'm going to have to. I'm, I'm going. I'm like. I'm having to go through to click approve because for some reason <laughs> YouTube doesn't allow you to just put the word tits or boobies in the chat on its own. Or even with eights instead of the bees. No, with eights instead of bees, it's getting through. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing. I'm, somehow, I'm Gay and Jew got through. Like that chat just on its own that got through, but boobs isn't allowed. YouTube is strange. I don't understand YouTube. I, I really don't. Um, anyway, um, this one is called The Haunting of Villa Diodati. That's how you pronounce that. I don't know. It's possible. People always tell me that I pronounce stuff wrong what? on my YouTube channel all the time. And I'm just like, oh, great. Thanks. So I'm going to get like eight, eight more comments saying the exact same thing because people can't be bothered to read the previous comment. Yeah, I've understood it now, thanks. I pronounced that word wrong. Oh, that's the, the, that's the whole thing. Comment sections are like the same three sentiments repeated over and over again by different people. Yeah, I know. And it's like, I, and it's like I can see this. You, you got this thing called a comment feed where like they all come. But through. they don't see it. They don't see it. That's the thing. They don't. So they don't see it. But it's like when you're writing a YouTube comment, you're essentially sending the creator a direct message. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's annoying. And, and but yeah. Anyway, um, let's talk about the thing Doctor Who occurred this week. Is you know what I get to say this time? I'm really excited to say this. Okay, go on. It was good. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I was surprised. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I have like a few things where I'm like that could be better, but like overall, it was good. And I think this is the first time, like, of all the episodes of the Chibnall era, where I'm just gonna. Flat out say, yeah, it was good. It was it was yeah, above yeah, average. Generally, generally enjoyable. And I was surprisingly enjoying it um, even before the series finale baiting showed up. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It was good season uh, series finale baiting. It was like Utopia, where it's like, oh, here's a good story that just happens to lead into the finale. Yeah, it earns it. It absolutely yeah, earns it. I was really surprised by that. It was actually a genuine surprise when... The Cyberman showed up, even even though you can't, even though you kind of should think that because you know it's the villa, it's the villa where um, Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. It's it is Cyberman, obviously British, Frankenstein. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, because because that's the thing. Big Finish already did this, as as everyone is expecting me of all people to point out. The Silver Turk. 
Yes, the silver. Yes, the silver tuck. I only know about that because you reviewed it. Um. Yeah, it's one of it's one of Big Finish's more popular. Is it really latter day plays? Because it's it, I'm going back like seven years now. But yeah, yeah. Big. I mean, Big Finish already did it. But that, that that's the thing. In terms of canon, it doesn't matter. But th- this episode is taking some some of the same basic things and sticking it up on the screen. Um. I kind, like kind the of whole human nature thing where they just read yeah, a story kind of, with a yeah, new adopter kind of on TV. In, in a, yeah, in a similar way to human nature. That and um, Big Finish did their own version of Sharda with eight instead of four. Yes. Just, isn't there like something where those, those are both canon because of like timeline bullshit that someone made up? Well, it's but there's a there's a, there's a prologue which is basically the Eighth Doctor arrives on Gallifrey where Romana is now president and says, "Do you remember there was that story that happened in that happened when I was the Fourth Doctor and you can't remember it and I can't remember it? It's weird that we can't remember it. Let's go and do it again." And then they do. That's awesome. I like that. It's it's, it's a really contrived way of doing it, but it just makes me laugh. It's it's kind of th- it's the kind of thing where because um, my head canon is like that. Paradoxes do happen, and like the you know the TARDIS has and stuff has systems to fix it, and well either by you know the TARDIS has paradox prevention or the divine intervention of the universe kind of thing, that it fixes the paradox which would be inevitable as soon as any time travel happens. So it's like I like the idea that sort of just sometimes time fuckery happens, and that's the story. It just just sort of occurs. Yeah, it just it just sort of happens. So I'm 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 assuming that lots of people are expecting me to go off about like canon crossing and timeline crossing, but it's Doctor Who. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree. Honestly, it's like it's not like um, I I I'm fine with there being a bit of timeline fuckery in Doctor Who. Like that's that's okay. So long as you know the 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 canon fuckery that really annoys me is stuff like when. There's just a laughing Dalek, and you know that that's just on screen now, and that's what the Daleks are, because that's not timeline fuckery. That's just saying, here's what the Daleks are. That's just getting it wrong. Yeah, that's just nope. You've misunderstood the concept. I think. Please stop. Please stop now. Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're, yeah, but like say, like say, cannon crossing here. This is fine. I mean, I, I, I don't think they realize. Oh shit! Hang on. Don't say anything. I've pulled out my headphones. Uh, so I've got a really short headphone lead at the moment, um, which means if I move it all, my headphones are going to fall out. I've plugged them back in now. You... Stay deadly still. I, I that's what I've been doing, but I I'm, need to get you a straight jacket. I'm a bit hyperactive, <laughs> so it's it's difficult for me. Yeah. Um. What was I ta- What was I talking about again? But yeah, it's it has it it has done the same basic thing as some um, Silver Turk Mary story, like saying that the Cyberman inspired frankenstein you know it's a um yeah you, you know it's a malformed human carcass yeah and, and it makes that, sense that, that's been engineered in some way yeah it, it makes sense the thing is though that was the i think that was the least interesting aspect of haunting in villa diodati yeah. to, to be honest and i it the... really was one one of the things that really annoyed me in the episode was how they felt the need to explicitly point out the parallel by having her go uh, by having her look at the Cyberman and go, who were you? Or are you perhaps a composite of different people sewn together? Like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't remember because it's been too long since I heard the Silver Turk, but there was a very similar line in that one as well. Yeah, it was. it's the kind of thing... I've not heard the Silver Turk, but I, I trust you. Oh, I love Silver Turk. Uh, it's, but it's the kind of thing... Don't, where... my memory is very bad. It's it's it is the kind of thing where if um it would be fine for that kind of parallel to be the kind of thing that you notice when someone points it out to you, but instead it's the show going, hey, hey, we're being clever, hey, look at our writing. Yeah, well, D- Doctor Who's never been very subtle, has it? Well, New Who hasn't. Well, New Who hasn't. Well, then again, Old Who wasn't very good at being subtle either. I mean. Well, it's the same. As, 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 as I said before, Genesis of the Daleks. Yeah, they're Nazi scientists. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. But it's the sort of that they're. Um, actually, they all like subtlety actually... in different ways. Yeah, but it's yeah, yeah, because uh, it's not actually legitimately written in the scripts. Like, uh, like Nida doesn't come along and say, "Hello, I am basically the Nazis in space." Yeah. yeah so yeah, the the equivalent, the the Chibnall lack of subtlety is very different from the say you know the. 
the Moffat lack of subtlety where Moffat would go, um, uh, you know, so Davies would be, hey, look, the doctor is God. And that would be, that would be how that, you know, it's self-aggrandizing stuff. And then Moffat would go, he's not God, but he is the most important person in the universe. And everybody either hates him or loves him because of how special he is. And Whereas then, Chibnall is just, the Doctor is our main character. Yeah, Chibnall, Chibnall doesn't present the Doctor as God, but Chibnall would write a line going, um, you know, where the Doctor goes, I am the main character of this story. <laughs> like, literally those words. Literally those words. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to uh, go ahead to the next episode yet, because it's a week before it's come out, definitely. You know, it, it's not out yet. How we have I... we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we no, haven't no, seen no. Ascension of the Cybermen because it's a week no. ago. I mean, it's currently it's to, it's, mm. but um, it, it is now the perfect example of of what we're talking about now is in that episode, and it, this is the part of that made me. I think this is the most I've rolled my eyes at anything in the Chibnall era, which says a lot. And it's not even that egregious, but it's just such a a perfect example of the thing, where um. The lone Cyberman is trying to wake up the other Cybermen, and he's welding. He's doing some welding on one of them, and it starts screaming, right? And he's like, he's just like grinning as he's like making this other Cyberman scream, right? And you're like, oh, that's kind of threatening. And then one of the characters just looks at him and goes, oh, we're on board with a Cyberman that makes the other Cyberman scream. And I'm like, yep. I, I can see that. Literally, what just happened on the screen. But to, but to be fair, we haven't seen that episode yet. Yeah, no, we haven't seen that episode yet. But if I had but, yeah. seen that, I would think something along the lines of, "Yes, that is scary, <laughs> Chris." <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, because that's the thing. He's got a co-writing credit on this one, and does he have a co-writing? Is it co-written? Is the next one co-written by him as well, or is it some? I don't know. Cause, I don't know because the the, the fanboy you... brain assumes immediately to uh, has to assume immediately that it's the showrunner who wrote the shit bits and yeah, anyone well, else it, who wrote the good bits. Should, it's funnily enough, yeah. The um, haunting was written by a guest writer who I whose name I looked up because she she was like um, she, it was like the best episode of this era so far. So I looked her up and I can't remember her name. What was it? Maxime something? And I looked up her writing credits and she's written like nothing but 172 episodes of Emmerdale and then this. I'm like, okay. And and then it's like, well, that's well, that's why it feels like there's such a spark. That feels like, like that's obviously why it feels like there's more of a spark to this one because it's like, hey, I actually get to write something interesting for a change. I mean, I could I could definitely feel that. It, yeah. Because that... That's the thing. As we've all been complaining about the way that Doctor Who has been going in this going in recent years, I have had to remind myself to put things in perspective. Because um, I was I was in um, a hospital recently for reasons, and I, I was waiting, and we were waiting for a long time. And it wasn't a hospital; it was one of those urgent care unit things. And there was an episode of Coronation Street playing on the screens, and they actually had the sound on and everything. And I had to watch like the whole episodes. And I just sort of, in that moment, I just sort of thought to myself, why the fuck have I been complaining about Doctor Who so hard? Dude, I really thought you were going to go so much darker than that. I really thought you were going to go, I was in an intensive care unit, and I looked over at a dying man, and I thought, <laughs> we don't have it so bad. We just have <laughs> TV shows that we don't like very much. <laughs> no, do, no, I mean... If I was going to go that dark, I would just be—I would just be like in an intensive care unit, and Coronation Street is on the screens, and it's just like these poor people—they have to watch Coronation <laughs> Street. Oh, that's, that's that's good. That's good. I approve of that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, I mean, that's but anyway, true, yeah. Uh, but but anyway, yeah. It's it's an improvement. This one, I think. It's you—you you can tell that they're approaching it with genuine enthusiasm, and like the. Like the set, the the set looks really nice as well in this one. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Um, I mean, it's um the moment where, oh, to be fair, all of them look pretty good, except like when they do mass CGI, which looked good last season. But for some reason, I think they've like had a cut to their CGI budget this season or something because there is a, oh, a yeah, clear quite... downgrade. Yeah, yeah. But uh, other than that, they all look pretty good. I think. Yeah, particularly the set in this one, because it reminded me of the others quite a lot, and that's 
easily one of the most underrated horror movies like that I can think of. Well, assumedly they've just gone to like a real uh, a real house somewhere, a real you know villa or mansion it looks, or something. It looks very similar to the house um, that um, Jackie and Pete in Rise of the Cybermen had. You know, it could be like they reused the Blake be. house. Yeah, they do. They do reuse sets occasionally, but but this one's been dressed up really nice. It has, it has, and like, it's gorgeous, and like the lighting and it it just like the first like the first half up until the Cyberman showed up, I was really enjoying. Like they get trapped in repeating sections of house, and there was that there was that bit that I really enjoyed where um Jody and Graham are communicating with different like sets of characters via the fireplace. Yeah. I, I just, but... I just thought it was really creative and fun. But speaking of things that were dressed up really nice, segue. Um, how did you feel about about Jodie's costume in this one? Because I think it was a dramatic improvement. Jodie's costume? I, d- I didn't notice. I don't. I don't tend to notice huh? things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what one of my pet peeves is now. Right. I can't. I can't remember because it was too long ago. Because this is last week. Yes. Wait. I'll go with it. So, one thing that really bugs me is when um, the Doctor's costume that they give them is closer to a uniform than just a person with a dress sense. Yeah. So, you know, like, Tom Baker had um, would wear, like, the same jacket and scarf, but he'd change his clothes. You know, like, most people wear the same jacket and scarf in their day-to-day, but change their clothes. Uh, and then you've got Peter Davison, who's wearing literally the exact same articles of clothing... In everything he's in, like a cartoon character. Yeah, it is like cartoon characters. Like Lisa has, like Lisa Simpson has the same red dress forever. Yeah, uh, but you're wrong. That's orange. But uh, and I will fight you on that. <laughs> but Jody, it's um, the lot. It's the line. I, it feels like I've been wearing the same red dress forever. Oh, is that actually a line in the show? That's actually a line in the Simpsons. Yes. Oh, maybe my uh, my color grading is weird. Fun. I win. Um, yeah, she's changed it up a bit. Yeah, I'm Google. So, sorry, it's on my phone. Yeah, and I also like that the companions dress up in this one. They do. Well, she's dressing up for the occasion, I think, as well. They're dressing for the time period. Yeah, because that does, that has bugged me in the past. Where there, there have been quite a lot of Doctor Who episodes where they go to the past, but they don't dress up. Well, you see, I, I'm totally fine with uh, the Doctor not doing it because the Doctor never. Like, will change the their clothes supposed, for the a doctor's specific supposed, reason. Yeah, the Doctor's supposed to just not give a shit. Like, um, I remember watching The Chase, and uh, the Doctor goes and sunbathes in his full suit. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that, was kind of, that was kind of adorable, though, wasn't it? Oh, like, and I love... He doesn't even take off his jacket. <laughs> That's the first Doctor for you. Um, oh yeah, and there was um, at the start of Unquiet Dead, where um, Rose changes her, Rose dresses up for the time period, and then she just goes to the Doctor, "Have you changed?" And he goes, "I changed my jumper." <laughs> that was awesome. But so, I, I always get the impression it's, it seems to be canon now because of that that Time Lords just don't really care about the temperature, and they'll be generally comfortable, whatever. Because like you've got, um, you know, everyone puts on a big coat for Seeds of Doom when they go to the Arctic. And then Tom's just there in his normal scarf going, yeah, I'm not cold. And like, I think there's an explicit line to go, uh, aren't you cold? And he's like, no, nah, I'm all right. So, yeah, and, and uh, normally the Doctor won't change their clothes for going to different time periods either, even when the companions do. But yeah, I, I like the, I, I do like the, I, I like that they all dressed up for it, really. And this, do- this outfit feels a lot more doctory than uh, her normal sort of, like, yoga vegan costume with the suspenders and everything yeah it's very like i'm i'm hitting i'm about to hit my 40s but i'm i'm trying because i'm single that's the the vibe i get from it yeah and that's fine it's fine it just doesn't feel particularly doctory to me yeah, I suppose I just I just stop I just stop noticing things after like the Lone Cyberman itself shows up because it's kind of it kind of makes you forget everything else. 
Yeah, but you don't in this episode you don't have to forget everything else. Like it's like right off the bat. No, you don't it, have to because it's generally enjoyable. Yeah, but it the, is the Lone Cyberman is almost too good in this episode because it kind of made me forget everything everything else that had happened. Like I I didn't really think that much about because like I said the um the the whole the the theme the the thematic link between the Cyberman and Frankenstein. I kind of forgot that this was even Mary Shelley. Well. As, as someone who's not, who wasn't, who had to have um, my mum explain the history to me as I went, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, you know, I, I'm not particularly uh, invested in the, the, you know, much history really. I know like what I was taught in school and that was it and this isn't included on it. So I was just lucky that uh, I was with my mum at the time I was watching this because she explained oh, it I'm to into, me. Oh, I'm into like old, old gothic horror and things like that. You see, that so, that, so am I, that, but it's exclusively Lovecraft for me. Yeah, that, 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 and uh, as as I said, I've I've heard this story essentially done before. Right. Yeah. Um, but as, it's right, right off the bat when you begin this episode, I immediately noticed. Oh, the character writing is actually like strong, and the supporting cast is really good. It, it felt out of place almost because it was so it was such so, such a, a step above what I was expecting from you know the status quo at this point. Yeah, it was kind of effortless the way you immerse yourself in it. Yeah, you know, you're you're right there, and there's just all of these very convincing characters who are a bit, you know, they're over the top, but they're not caricatures. You believe that they actually, because they're, you know, um, because of the way they live, you you just believe that that's an eccentric lifestyle that they lead. Well, yeah, because they did, because the because because the story of how Mary Shelley came to write Frankenstein is very very famous by this point as yeah a, bu- a bunch of people getting drunk in a villa yeah I mean the the Lord Byron was my standout he was just he was brilliant um yeah it's this... like he's a bit he's a bit of a he's a bit of a dick but he doesn't have to come out and say I'm a bit of a dick yeah exactly if uh, Chippers were writing this episode he would have gone I'm a bit of a dick. The Doctor, you're quite attractive, and I'm going to flirt with you, even though someone who I know is attracted to me is right here. Like, you know, that's that's how he would talk. Uh, you know, I'm only yeah. exaggerating a bit. And, and in this, you know, he doesn't say any of that. It's it's all... Even the flirting is sort of just, you know, you can tell he's flirting, but it's it's not explicit. And it's... Yeah, that's, um, tr- yeah, that's true. If, I mean, if it was... I mean, if it, if it, if it, if it was Chibnall, there's there, there's this bit where um the Doctor is um the the Doctor's explaining the history to Gra- to um Graham Ryan and Yaz, saying, "Oh, we're at the villa where they um, where Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Some of the greatest minds of the generation. I'm sure it's going to be, a, I'm sure it's going to be a very enlightening experience." And then she opens the door, and then they're like wrestling on the ground, yeah, and like giggling with each other. I just thought. If we're going to be even less unsubtle about this, she would say, "I'm going to be sure it's going to be a very enlightening experience, the greatest minds of the generation." Then she opens the door, and then they're all just like fucking in a massive pile. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they originally shot, but they had to cut it for the BBC. <laughs> you know, a bit, a bit too grown up that one. That's why there was. That's why. That's why there was that specific chemistry between the cast. They'd all been fucking. <laughs> But yeah, it's quite it's quite well done. It is very well done. The characters are really there. strong. Yeah, I have to agree there. All I was saying was that I kind of forgot about them because the lone Cyberman was done so well. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine, you know, there were good things, but something else was even better, so it stole the show. I know. Do you remember what it felt like to have a Doctor Who episode that feels like this? Yeah, uh, right. It's not like there are no things to criticize, right? You know, it's not like it's a flawless masterpiece, but it's good. Like, there's stuff to really like in it. It's like, it, yeah, yeah. It's it's like there's a big pile of good things, and there's like a pile of bad things as well. But you know, you could look at the pile of good things and be like, yeah, uh, this this is enough for me. Yeah, because that lone Cyberman is so the, like the voice and the design of it. It's. I've always wanted them to do a, a Cyberman that's got like a bit of its faceplate missing, and like you can see his like rotting skin underneath. I do wish they'd done a bit more. You know, they'd had some like wires on his face or something. Yeah, something like that. But it's like as as far as you can go in Doctor Who, isn't it? 
Well, they did. I that's think the they, uh, they almost did better with Danny's as, as a sideman because he looked oh, a yeah, bit. That's true. Um, like the yeah, technology that's true. was integrated. Like emaciated, him. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I do like the Lone Sideman design. Now, there is. Um, I've seen someone. Uh, I don't know how common this criticism is, but I've seen someone saying that the Lone Sideman is an issue um, because it's. Uh, the emotional inhibitor being broken is. Um, contradictory because that's literally how they defeat the cybermen in like the first in the rise of the cybermen they turn off the emotional inhibitors and because of the lack you know of, of inhibitor they all uh die because the emotions kill them because they have what's happened to them right um and it's like it's the suggestion that um chibbers doesn't really understand the cybermen either uh, but there is precedent for it you've got the um in that same story, the Lumic Cyberman, like John Lumic himself, he survives his emotional inhibitors being turned off because, you know, it was his dream to become a Cyberman before. And now this the lone Cyberman and in the next episode that isn't out yet because it's it's a week ago. Um So so it must then, be a very it must be a specific person who has been converted and been yeah. left with it been left with enough emotions to be able to spout dark darkly poetic lines oh it's like um most people I, it's believable to the extent that like i fully believe that most people who if they were chopped up and sewn back together would you know not be able to deal with that psychologically and would basically die um whereas i'm sure that there are a few people who exist particularly ones who explicitly want that done to them because they're a bit nuts would you know would deal with it would would actually have you know would actually be able to cope with it uh, is this fine man going to turn out to be the master? Oh god, I, I, that would be. I guess that would be okay. I don't know. I mean, now that you say that, I am thinking that there is going to be some sort of reveal about who this lone side man was before they were converted. I think. Well, that's there's a. Um, well, I think we can get to that because there's there's some hints in the episode that's not out yet, isn't there? Yeah, Defro yeah, defrosted robot is posting in the comments. World enough and time. Yeah, yeah, because Bill got converted and she was left with vestiges of herself yeah and yeah well enough in time is is pretty good it's pretty good it's oh, very World strong it's very strong it's like oh no it's, it's the doctor falls i'm thinking of where it's like um well enough in time is just good like it is just it is it's just good like there's nothing detracting from it i'm not saying like it's just good it's no better i'm saying it's just good it's no worse like you can say it's good or above you know um it's uh but but the doctor falls there is some stuff detracting from it uh yeah i think i i, th I think it stay it stays the landing it just it doesn't it doesn't stay at the height the world enough and time was yeah it's a bit too self-aggrandizing it resurrects bill um it has a bit of like it has some uh, some pretty weird missy and the master scenes at the beginning that feel weird and weird and weird yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I enjoyed it as a whole, but, but, uh, but yeah, back to back to Lone Cyberman. Yeah, I, I'm thinking now maybe this Cyberman is going to turn out to be a character, and that will be the big reveal because, well, a big reveal because that's but they've already shown its face, like. so it's, it can only yeah, either be the Doctor or the Master. Yeah. But that's the thing; its flesh is sort of emaciated a little bit, isn't it? Well, I, I'm. I'm sure it would have come out by now is the thing, because it's not like I've been trying to actively avoid spoilers, because when it's... Oh, yeah, other than this leaks, episode, I'm yeah. not that invested. It's not even the leaks. It's like, I've not seen anything about... Well, you know, it has... It's it's a, it's a matter of public knowledge who is cast to play this guy. You know, if, if he's playing other characters, and if it was like... If it was Bradley Walsh in there, we would know. Oh, yeah, totally. But then again, as I, as I said, it has to be it has to be like a psychopath who'd want that shit done to them. Oh yeah, yeah, we know enough about his backstory at this point where we can be confident that it's certainly not. I, I doubt it's even the master. You know, I doubt the master would be. Would yeah, want no, that to no, that to was just that was just something I was spitballing. Yeah. To be fair, I that's it's not like the master has been treated totally within character so far. I think. Well, no, that's true. But, I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to find who plays the Lone Side Man, and I'm not seeing, not seeing a name. Oh, they actually made him. 
they actually made him. This is real. Chris Chibnall's a monster, isn't he? Cutting people apart and stitching them back together. Um, can we can we use that as meta commentary on the episode itself? Yes. Yeah. Do yeah. Do that. Chibnall took old episodes and cut them apart and start and stitched them back together again. F- literally. Yeah, he did. He did. That's it. We've done it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. That's what. That's what next week's one is going to be that I haven't seen yet because it's now in the pre- present. Isn't it great on the nineteenth of February, twenty nineteen, twenty twenty five? It's a, it's a lovely, it's a great day. People are dying of coronavirus. It's brilliant, isn't it? I love dying of coronavirus. Oh yeah, it's one, yeah, it's wonderful. Have you sampled the vintage coronavirus of the of the fourteenth of February from the week before? Well, you know, I was I've just been they to VidCon where, where there have been coronavirus cases in London, and I've come back from VidCon sick, so I'm like. Oh God! Oh no! I'm going what to if, do a death. What if? What if I have coronavirus? You will be you be converted into a Cyberman. It's it's the future. It's, it's the cure for coronavirus. It's, it's the, well, it will be, it would be the cure for coronavirus because I'm sure the Cybermen know what they're doing. It's the cure for Praxius. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The one the one thing that I am curious about now though is. How did Jack know about the the Lone Cyberman? Oh, that's not going to be explained, surely. I s- no, it's <laughs> Jack's because... not coming back. I, I see it now. It's just going to be Jack was there for his cameo. It, he was there because he was Jack. No, but that's the thing. The reason that he was there was he needed to see this moment and let and let everyone know the Lone Cyberman. Don't let it get what it wants. Because in this episode, when the Lone Cyberman shows up, everyone has to. The lone Cyberman is like, give me this, give me this, give me this, and the Doctor is, uh, and the Doctor has to not give it what it wants because Jack said that. Yeah. Speaking of though, um, I remember when that reve- when that you know happened in Fugitive of the June when Jack showed up and he said, "Beware the lone Cyberman, don't give it what it wants." Uh, I remember we said that there was no, uh, you know, there was probably no reason that Jack was being so fucking cryptic. And that it was just so that it could feel, you know, like a, a teaser, because it literally is just there as a teaser rather than, uh, you know. So, and I think it would actually, now now it's, you know, we're, we're right. Because now it would be a, a, a tangible improvement if if, Jack's, uh, if Jack said, beware the lone Cyberman, it's after an AI, and with it, it will be able to, you know, resurrect the cyber race, you know. That, and they'll be able to conquer humanity. Yeah, I mean, first, you know, there's no reason for him to be a cryptic ass other than to not give the, you know, he, he surely should be giving all the, the heroes all the information that they have. And if he knows that there's a, the, the lone Cyberman getting what, it's want, what it wants would be bad, then he knows what it wants. So you should tell them, because, you know, he wants them to win. Yeah, because for a bit, you don't really know what the lone Cyberman wants, so... You... Because, because the characters know not to give it what it wants, the the only real reason they have to not give it what it wants and just say, okay, fine, have what have whatever you want and just fuck off and leave us in peace. The only reason they've got to fight that. So, the, so the seeding of this story done by Jack is the seeding of that moment done by Jack is mostly to make this story work. And you know, fair play for that, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, even though it's, it's, you could make the story work without that moment. Just like, oh, fuck, it's the Cyberman. What's it doing? It What's it, what, you know, what's it after? It's probably bad news, right? Yeah, that's true. I, I do like, I, I do like the way that they, um, that they get towards that conclusion of, and, and, say, and saying that, um, Percy, Percy Shelley has to live, otherwise history will be fucked. But we also can't give the lone Cyberman what it wants, and the Doctor has to make that choice. And, well, Deal with the consequences of the other. I did sort of hate that moment a bit. That's for one of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's it's very like, it's 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 very te- it's another of this era's tell is it's another of this era's tell don't show problem. Well, it's more of um, the Doctor's motivation in that bit is um, I think the weakest the Doctor has written in the whole episode, uh, where you've got the Doctor saying uh, and that you know. We know what the Doctor's values are. We've been watching her exploits for like 55 years. Or 57. Um, and the the Doctor saying, no, we can't let this one person die to win the day because he's a writer and writers are important that, uh, and he'll direct history, you know. 
It's the maid and the valet. Fuck him. But this guy, we have to save. You know. Yeah. But, on the topic of the Doctor, this is the first time Jodie Whittaker has felt like the Doctor. She actually acts like the Doctor in this. Yeah, there was some... Um, yeah, there was that moment where she's... Um... Where she's saying, I'm not going to lose anyone else to them. Uh, yeah, and you're like, oh, Bill, I remember that. Yeah. And like, you know, Adric and that, the character has a history yeah. again. Yeah, she's actually, yeah, and jo- Jodie gives a really good performance as well. She's actually throwing herself into it. And I'm not just seeing the quirky bubbly, the quirky bubbly 13. Exactly, yeah. So for, for seasons 11 and 12, so far before this one, the Doctor has just been characterized as, like, a needy, hyperactive child, and that's it. Now, in this episode, the it's like all the other Doctors, where, you know, the Doctor regenerates, and the core of the character, who he is, is the same. But the uh, the superficial, you know, the affectations are different. Now, it is it feels like, you know, the hyperactive, needy child has been draped over the core of the character that we already know and love, like has been done with previous regenerations. It's it's great. I love it. It's this is the first one that made me think that made me see the Jodieisms as super, you know, as like uh, additional elements to the core of the Doctor. You know, it, it felt like the Doctor with the Jodieisms rather than just whatever the fuck this character is that Jodie's playing. Yeah, she's actually the Doctor in this one. She is. This, it's great. I was so happy. Yeah, it's a pro. It's a it's a proper Grinch's heart grew, grew two sizes too big moment for this for for um this era, I suppose. Well, you know, I I wish we could be talking. I mean, I start we... I started to have that with Spyfall, and it's kind it's kind of been a bit. I mean, it's kind of been a low level warmth throughout this series, and yeah, this episode, yeah, lovely. No, this is this is my this is my first time since season ten. Well, no. To be fair, I I was uh, I really really wanted to like series eleven, because like um, it was a time when I, I I I you know everyone was going it's gonna be really bad because Wham and Doctor and that no that not good, and I was going no this will prove them wrong a Wham and can be Doctor, and then I was watching it like and I was like it's fine it's fine, um, and then as I watched more I'm like I was realizing no it's not good because you know. I was predisposed to go, uh, when, when people were saying it's bad for this reason, I was predisposed to go, they're wrong, and what's the opposite of that? It's good. So I, I was predisposed to think it was good, and then, you know, it took me going and reflecting to go, but it's not really, though. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I have. I, I, I also have that same impulse to just go against what everyone else is saying, but I, I didn't think it was going to be good going in, so... Mostly, mostly because of my previous experiences with Chibnall. But it's is it a shame. I think that we're not actually watching this last week because saying all this, I know what it's what what happens next and what's done um, with all of this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It uh, it is last it is last week though, isn't it, Jay? It's 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 it gonna is, be good. It is. It's this is yeah. the one week of happiness I got to have watching Doctor Who. Well, it's something. It is. It's something. Give the show to the writer who wrote this, please. Give her the show. Just give her control. I don't give a fuck at this point. Like maybe it'll be maybe it'll be bad, but if it is, okay. What do we lose? Yeah, I'd I'd like more episodes built around classic gothic literature. Yeah, I, I'd like more episodes where I the mean... Doctor goes and confronts the villain on her own and acts like all acts as a moral arbiter because that's like the, the you know the character. Yeah, that and there's so much. There is so much more that can be done with classic, be done with because there's loads of stories behind lots of bits of classic gothic literature, which I think would be right for episodes of Doctor Who, like um, Robert Louis Stevenson when he wrote um, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Um, he actually um, he wrote the first draft of it, and he showed it to his wife, and he actually ended up burning it because. Um, because he um, hated it so much, and then he ended up write, rewriting it from oh, scratch. Wow. Yeah, he he rewrote the whole thing from scratch. So I was thinking that the because I, I, just at the end of this, I just kept thinking about other gothic literature that you could make Doctor Who episodes about. So you could make a Doctor Who episode about like the cursed first draft of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Like, I think that'd be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah, there's so much you can do with that. My my vote is um, 
Daddy Lovecraft. Oh yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just make and sure Shirley his cat's Jackson, not in it. That wouldn't be. That Shirley, wouldn't ja- Shirley Jackson. I would kill for a Doctor Who episode about Shirley Jackson. Uh, you're gonna have to tell me who that is. I'm sorry. Uh, Haunting of Hill House. Oh, I've been being told to watch the adaptation of that. Oh yeah, watch it. It's great. Yeah, and she has she has a really interesting backstory as well. That that's the th- that's the thing. Doctor Who is uh, that that's the thing with Do- Doctor Who's recent obsession with trying to teach people about history. Uh, there there is lots more that you can do. Yeah, there is some okay. Something else that was really strong in this episode was the comedy. Yeah, surprisingly good. So um, I have a I have a favorite line in this episode where the Doctor is you know in a panic and there's like the the villa is clearly haunted by something and there's like you know there's there's uh, ghosts going around everywhere and uh, she's she's you know she's taking control like the Doctor actually would and trying to figure stuff out um, and the Baron just goes up to her and goes, "May I say you're most lovely in a crisis." I was like, "That's, that's so good." <laughs> I had to pause it. I had to pause the episode because I was laughing too hard. Oh yeah, and it doesn't and it doesn't feel out of place in an episode which is mostly like gothic horror. Yeah, and you believe that this is a guy. You know, this is a a guy who leaves an eccentric like lifestyle. I would believe that he is, while he's clearly panicked. I I believe that he'd react like this. You see, last thing I, I'm I'm desperately trying to figure out what the actual like you know. Um, I've clearly had a very different reaction to it, to the character writing. I'm, I'm just really trying to figure out what the like the objective difference is between this writing and other writing that's made it feel so different. Because there's clearly well, cause a difference. Because it's, it's not telling you how to react to it. I suppose so. Yeah, and they they just feel like real people, even though they don't feel like any real people I've ever met. Yeah, because I can't, I can't really think of a moment in this episode where a character stops the episode to say, "Well, that, the the thing okay. about me is that I'm a bit of a flirt." I can think of one of those moments. Oh, all right, go on then. Go it's on. not, it's not the thing about me, but it is. Um, or are you a composite of many men? Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that, that's the <laughs> thing. There aren't that many moments about that. The episode isn't entirely that. I, I, I don't want to say this because it's too discharge like it's too uncharitable. But I could almost see Chris going in and it's like people won't get the metaphor, put this line in. And that's his only contribution to the episode. Explain it explain it to the audience. You know you know that theme that you you know that thing that you're trying to communicate with, with like with like actions and, and subtleties? Why not just say it? Yeah, yeah, just just say Why not just theme? say what you mean? Just say what you mean. I'm I'm gonna annoy you now and say that the last Jedi does that. And then immediately move on. Oh no. Oh wait, have I pulled out my headphones? Hello. Are you you giving me the silent treatment? No, I have pulled out my headphones. Sorry about that. What were you saying? Please bear with us, chat. I will now read out chats while Jay is doing things with his headphones. I've, I've, I can hear you again. The TARDIS is powered by my sex drive. <laughs> sex I saw drive. that one. <laughs> the TARDIS is powered by Look at by our Reed. story and how smart it is. We're smart, guys, we swear. We are. We yeah, are, we are a, smart. We're smart. That, 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 that is a direct quote from, I don't know, any ep- Fugitive of the Jadoon, yeah. Do you think I, I think that uh, Chris strikes me as the kind of person that, while he's having sex, calls his own dick big? <laughs> what? If it is, so, if it say, is, it, 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 if he is the sort of person who would say that, then I, 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 I could, I could, I, I could, you, you know, I could be charitable towards that because people say all sorts of weird shit during sex. I think he says it during, <laughs> during table reads. <laughs> <During April. laughs> if Chris Chibnall is watching this, please don't sue. If Chris Chibnall is watching this, uh, please direct. Please DM me with just an audio clip of you saying that your dick is big. <laughs> you know what? I've never downloaded for the stream, and we would get so much use out of is just an image of Chris Chibnall to cut to instead of something from the episode. That's. That's something that needs to be in the next one, which is the finale. 
Well, not the oh, next yeah, one. That, the next, next. Yeah, one. that's true. The 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 um picture the. The, the picture of him on that show slagging off Pip and Jane Baker, that's a popular oh, one. Oh yeah, that hit, that one. That's a great one. I love yeah. that clip. Yeah, that's um people always use that use the clip of um Chris Chibnall on that show on that show going, Well it's just not very original, it's very like run of the mill Doctor Who. People keep using that clip as a meme to show go, Aha, and now he's writing the sort of generic Doctor Who that he criticized back in the day. And I was just like, It it's a meme. That's all it is. It's that was him as a child. Him now is very different. Well, yeah, him as a child, <laughs> I think would have criticized him now, right? Yeah, exactly. Just sort. Of, yeah, uh, like if I if I talked to my younger self, my younger self would be going, "What happened to you?" I'm not sure what mine would say. I'm I'm quite out of touch with my younger self. He was strange wore bright blue jeans with neon skulls on them. Oh. Mm. I, I I understand that noise. Do you remember last decade? Um, what, two months do you, ago? Do you remember the Cybermen? Do, do you remember other things? I remember. What, what's, what are you doing? What's this bit? What? Is, is this a bit? What's happening? Well, no, this isn't a bit, no. Okay. Why, why are you asking me if I remember things? I don't. I, I don't know. My, I had a brain fart. So I've done something silly, and I've left my laptop um, across the room for me. So I'm just going to go run and get it, so I can actually look at my notes. Uh, okay, I will entertain the chat while while you're doing that. Thank you. You're a cyber good cyber member. Now I'm just. Now I'm just trying. C cyber member. Why have you stuck that in my brain, defrosted robot? Now I'm just imagining a cyber cock. I'm back. What? What would it's not it? A very what big would room. a what would a Cyberman porno be called? Uh, chat will be good at this. Someone just said Chris cum balls. <laughs> Kick me in the chipnels. I mean, that's a good name for summon. A Cybercog? Rise of the Cybermember. Rise of the Cybermember, that's good. I like how we've totally stopped talking about this episode now. It's just, it, it's good. Move on. It is good. It's 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 very yeah. Do you good. do you have do you have any more thoughts? Because I don't. Um, I have one um, either criticism or something that's going to have to be explained to me. What was with the fucking bones? Like, what did they have to do with anything? They're moving about. Bone. Bones are creepy. But like, why? Why were they moving? Um, because gothic horror has bones, and was the Cyberman doing it, or was Shelley doing it? Um. Oh, literally because oh, I tweeted this while I was the, while I was watching it. Lord By, it's a line from Lord Byron who says, "I swear my bones have never caused such mischief before." That's a good line. Yeah, I like that one. That's what she said. You know, another line that's good is when um, they're talking about the Doctor and Lord Byron says, um, "They're not from the colonies. She is from a place much, much stranger." And then the other guy goes to him and says, Hmm, the North. That's a good line. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Oh yeah, I'm looking back at the I'm looking back at the, the um tweets that I sent out while I was watching it. Um yeah, I I was I was thinking that it was gonna turn out the house was a TARDIS. That's a good twist. I, I I can't believe they haven't done that twist more, actually, because it's such a an obvious one to do. Yeah. I don't know. It makes sense. I mean, the episode makes sense anyway, because it's like the AI doing it. And like, it's the Master's TARDIS, and that's how they reveal the Master, kind of a thing. Or the yeah. Ronnie. It's the Ronnie. Oh, yeah, there was another bit of comedy that I liked. Um, It was the bit where um the Doctor is has crushed the um bone spider thing, and she's like tasting it like wine. Like, she puts a little finger in the crushed bit of bone spider and tastes it. It's like, hmm, it was... I, th I think it's from the something of blubber system or something. She says it's from the 1500s. Yeah, it's something like that. I, I watched I this know, again that, for the third. I watched this for the third time before the stream because I like it. Bloody hell! I know. I know. That's a compliment, right? Well, I was like, I, I probably wouldn't have watched it again if um, I wasn't stre uh, doing a stream about it. But then again, I also wouldn't have watched it again if I didn't enjoy it. So the the first time I watched it was um, so I watched it first. I was on holiday in the Highlands with my parents, right? Uh, I watched it with my mum. My dad he's not really been enjoying the new seasons, 
and we'll be we were like, oh, this was good. You should watch it. So I watched it again with him, uh, and now I watched it again for this stream. And it's it's a good it's a good. I like it. This is a good one. It is it's the one. Yeah, the one the the one that you're actually going to remember after this series is finished. Um, well, but then, then again, I remember lots of the ones in this series. I'm going to remember Orphan 55. I'm going to remember chuckle. Orphan 55. I'm going to remember Ascension of the Cybermen when it comes out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely going to remember that one. Shall we move on and talk about that one soon? Um, yeah, I've got two things left, left in my notes, and they're about the same thing. Okay, go on. So we've got... The deaths in this were great. Like, New Who normally doesn't have balls when killing off characters... This one, and I don't mean that it won't kill off characters, it will. Um, what I mean is that it will, um, do you remember, uh, what's it called, the Empress of Mars? Vaguely. Do you remember when the Ice Warriors killed people in that? No. So what they had is they had this really weird animation where people's bodies would like go, and it wasn't in any way threatening and it made the deaths feel so just like oh this is like this is like oh you know I, I can't think of the right adjective just you know everything that a death shouldn't feel completely non-threatening hang on let me look up the trailer because it was in the trailer i'll see if i can find a clip of it do you, do you have any recollection of that no none i cannot remember that episode whatsoever well, it's sort of a, a new oh, um, trope so, oh uh, alpha century was in it Yes. Oh, that was funny. That was funny, especially for me, because I did a comedy bit about five years previously where I was talking about stupid ideas for random monsters from Classic Who that they could bring back next. And one of them was Alpha Centuri, and I was right. I was just like, it, it's almost like I want them to get to a point where they are bringing stuff back because they know it's a meme. I like Alpha Centuri was one of those. But that's the thing. They haven't done the fucking Rani. <laughs> Oh yeah, they need to do the Rani. They need to do the Vervoids. Okay, I found, I found it. I'm going to put it on screen briefly. I'll, I'll if, like totally need to do the Vervoids. If you, uh, if you get this, uh, if you get the stream up, you will be able to see it as well. So yeah, I'm on the stream, yeah. I'm going to put it on screen with a, just, just do a display capture. Have I got anything incriminating up? Not that I would otherwise. Uh, I don't... I don't Are you doing a technical Oh, thing? I do have a Google search of myself open. That's a bit embarrassing. Be, <laughs> Be careful of doing a technical thing, Jay. Right. Uh, that's, that's, there we go. That's, that's fine. Uh, that's, okay, let's put the display capture on screen. Almost there. Display capture. Uh, oh, God. Okay, there we go. And this is the uh, the animation that I'm talking about. It it looks it just takes the impact out of any death when they kill people and it looks like this. It's like it turns them into a bouncy ball. Should you let me know when you see it? Yeah, I can see it, yeah. Did you did you see the bouncy ball death? Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Awesome. <laughs> what the I'm surprised I didn't remember that. That looks so stupid. Yeah, it's and it's almost a trope to give uh, to have just um, like when they know it's a kids show, deaths that you that are, uh, that have got a funky animation to them rather than are just deaths, right? You know. So it's so you don't think of it as a death. You think yeah. It's like a comedy bit. You wouldn't have um, because death is too sad for children. Yeah, you wouldn't have like the, the last thing you would expect to see in one of those stories is like just a character picks up a rock and bashes someone on the head and then they stop moving except maybe the leg twitches or something, you know. And that's the thing. I saw that kind of a thing as a kid. You know, I don't think it fucked me up, but maybe if I didn't, I would be a much better person. But who knows? Um, I, I, you know, it seemed fine for me. Uh, I know the whole like. I it happened to be as a kid and I'm fine. It's like an argument used to justify like people hitting their children and stuff, which I'm not in favor of, but I don't have a better argument. So, but it, yeah, it, it, it does make, it makes the deaths much less, you know, just much less impactful. And in this story, there are two deaths. One, a guy is choked out and then chucked across a room. Um, and then the other one, you don't see the death. It's off screen. 
but uh, a woman is being like choked out, and then the lone Cyberman like does a a quick like cr- like crunch, like a like a, a twist, and then the scream suddenly stops, and you're like, oh, you know, that is that is quite hits. nice. Th- this episode, hits. yeah, like this episode has so much stuff that like really impacts you because and and like and like the mood and the lighting the atmosphere the design of the lone cyberman i just generally really enjoyed it yeah and then contrast that to episodes like praxius where um the girl's like best friend dies and she's like then the next thing she's doing is going yeah yeah well yeah that's that's a perfect example of the gimmick that i'm glad they got rid of but like when um a, a, her friend dies, and then uh she barely reacts to it. She's like she's like oh my friend's dead. Anyway, I'm famous. Why don't you recognize me? <laughs> yeah, like I said back in then, they should have done a doing like a Logan Paul like filming it, and it's like oh my god, my friend is about to die. Right. <laughs> should have actually done something with it. But um. In this, you have um, it's just the butler that dies, right? You know, it, it would be totally fine, it, like acceptable, if none of them even reacted to it. It was like you know, or, or just one, one went, "Oh fuck, the butler's dead," you know, that kind of reaction. But there's a moment where one of them sees the body and he's like, "Oh god, no!" And you actually believe it. You're like, you know, it's a very believable. Oh god, oh fuck, no, no, my friend's dead. You know, it, you feel this pain. It's so much better. It's so much better executed than. Uh, well, a lot of the deaths in the Chibnall era, but specifically practice is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's really nice. And then finally, there is another trope, another New Who trope I'm glad they subverted. Do you, 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 know, you know the one? Um, as I said, my memory is bad because this was so long ago. Um, so, a big New Who trope is saved by the power of love. That's how they get rid of yes, the monks. That, yes, that's true. The love spaceship from Fear Her. The oh god, um, closing time. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Oh my god. You, you, fuck. Shutting it. Shutting it out. Shutting it out. I'm calm. Um, in this. Uh, calm. Just sorry. Just just, just sorry. <laughs> James Corden part cyber I'm converted considering... saved by the power of love. No. <laughs> yeah. Consider it's the worst thing I'm that's ever now. happened. I'm fine, I'm fine now. I'm fine. Okay. Just please never say the words closing time ever again. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, 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 continue, the episode continue that may now. not be named. <laughs> the episode which may not be named. That could be so many, though. But um, they completely subvert that trope here because they, uh, they try to appeal uh, to uh, the, cyber, the lone Cyberman. They go, you know, surely you were a person once believe you know think back to who you were right uh did you have kids you didn't kill the kid does that mean you have kids think back to the person you were are you a father and he goes i was a father i had children i slipped their throats when they joined the resistance against the cyberman and he goes full beast mode like oh yeah that was amazing yeah. that was so good yeah i love how I know, like, the balls on this episode. It was, like, yeah. I'm afraid to be a bit intimidating and scary and weird and fucked up and gross. They got away with so much. And yeah. they, did an- they didn't do another thing that I've been criticising it for as, uh, recently, which is they let the Doctor lose, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Like, we were saying about that she should have lost in the conflict with Zelen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because yeah, she has a choice here. She's either got some... She's either got to lose Percy Shelley or yeah. lose the series arc. And in uh, in an inferior episode, she would have... Uh, well, I guess it, it is just like this because it's set up. But, you know, in an inferior episode, she would have found a way to fix both. You know, to uh, pull the third solution out of her butt. Yeah, but because but because it's got to do the finale setup. Because obviously the Lone Star Man has got to get what it wants. Otherwise, the finale yeah. won't have any stakes at all. Uh, but that's that's all I've got on it. Do you have anything to add, or should we move no, to super chats? Pre- no, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, do you want to do the super chats, and we'll move on super to chats and next week? Yeah, we will. We'll be back next week, by which I mean in a few minutes, with the uh, discussion of ascension of the Cyberman, the Cyberman, the Cyberman. Uh, after we look at super chats, and I'm definitely not. 
I'm definitely not just stalling as I bring them up. Uh... No, because, no, no, because you plan these things. You plan these things meticulously in advance. I'm a really good streamer. Yes, it's the best streamer. It. All the other ones suck. Right, there I, they are. I, pre I, I presume. I don't watch that many <laughs> YouTubers. Right, uh, we've got. Uh, take this money. You really need this. I mean, thanks. I don't. I don't know what that says about us. That they. Uh, well, I guess me that they think uh, I. I desperately need money, but. Uh, yeah, you know. There we go. Give Stu money. That's mm -hmm. going to be the meme. It is. Uh, Stu back full Patreon. Uh, hey, Jay, you planning on doing any videos like your Another Life one? Oh, any, uh... Oh, yeah, I guess that does it. Uh, that was a real good one. Also, hi, Rags. Uh, funnily enough, I'm working on another video right now. Well, not right now. I'm doing a stream right now. But, um, today I've been working on a second video about Another Life. Because, um, well, there's there's new news about it, which I uh, I won't go too far into. Oh, you watch the video and you'll find out. Oh, yeah, that's, com that's coming out, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad you made that video, because I was actually considering watching it until I saw it. <laughs> it's it's so bad it's good. It's worth watching if you like, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, okay, because, yeah, because yeah, I do like so bad it's good things, like Bademic. Yeah. Um, there's a, an unironic theory going around that it's bad on purpose as a data mining experiment by Netflix to test audience thresholds for bad content. <laughs> I, be I believe it. M I, mean, I believe not... it if it didn't have real like actors and writers associated with the project. Because who well, would I sign believe... up for that? I believe it. I, I, I think there must be someone at Netflix under who's like undergoing an act of self-sabotage. Yeah. Because the decision-making decision on it recently has been pretty fucking appalling. Yeah, I don't... Under, well, I mean, we say the that cancel... from the consumer end and we can only see what we can see. No, but it's just like the can like deciding to cancel Wojak Horseman, one of their most critically acclaimed shows, consistently critically acclaimed with a massive fan base, while you've got more, show, well, you've got more shows ending... And and it's like, what's going to pick up the slack if you're losing, if you're literally kicking people out? Yeah. But we are getting dangerously close into just saying what my next video is. Just like, they uh, don't I, have to watch it now. We've gone, we've gone through all the talking points. Okay, okay. T yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah. Uh, the next one is, hope you're having a good week so far, Jay, and that you're recovering okay. I'm I'm recovering fine, thank you. I'm I've got a sore throat though. I've, Did you have <laughs> coronavirus? Is, is I, that what the I doctor? still have it. Okay. I'm gonna spread it everywhere over the internet that, to all the people watching. Um, that that is real. That that is definitely what is happening. Well, coronavirus is real. Coronavirus well, no, you, is you real. You definitely you definitely have that. This isn't a joke. It's not a joke. Coronavirus no. isn't a joke, Stu. No, it's not a joke. Uh, it's not okay to joke about things. Please give sixty nine percent to Jay. I, of what? I'll take it, but of what? A, a cake. Oh, thanks. Um. Yeah. Is, is that it? We've got one more. Where's Nazi vampires, Jay? Rag should be live with the guys by now. Are you forcing me to watch you tonight? I don't I don't know about uh that stream. I'm aware that he does it, but I don't I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. I don't have any insider insights. But uh that's all that's all of them. So we will be back in like a, a week and definitely not a few minutes uh to talk De about ascension of the Cybermen. De definitely a few minutes. A few minutes. Yeah. Well, no, don't a go week, anywhere. not a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Well, yeah, don't go. It's, it's, we're pretending it's a week, but it's actually a few minutes. Okay. okay. Please proceed to the next stream. Bye.